Hey guys, welcome back to the Zotics. I hope y'all are having a fantastic day. Um, last time we just kind of got introduced. We realized, we found out that our name is Rhea. Um, gosh, I'm trying to remember the beginning of the game. <laughs> um, we are a nurse and seems like we're starting to get to know one of our patients uh, really well. Or at least we're having a lot of conversations with Garrett. And we've met Morgan as well. And then we have Dr. Ballerine. And then we have Claire. And we have uh, Mayrin and Asa and Luca and Celine. And we're just meeting a lot of different characters. And let's see what today brings for us in the context of characters. Nope. Uh, of course I'm aware. I was actually there. Which is more than can be said for you. Seems like we are talking about the war and how he got hurt. Then you should know what you should know that many hospitals do not have time nor the resources to look after patients who selfishly refuse to listen to the advice of their doctors. You should be more thankful. I if you keep walking on that leg in its current condition, you will only make it worse. You will have to stay in the hospital longer and then you will be further drained on our funds. You are making yourself a burden, both upon our our infinite oh infinite resources and my patience. I I just I need to get better quicker. I don't want to be lying in a bed for weeks and weeks and weeks. I it just feels like a waste. I am well aware, but ignoring my vice is not the way to achieve a speedy recovery. Please give in please keep this in mind next time you feel like playing hero. Dr. Valorant turns his face turns to face me. I'm fixing with that with a frosty stare. Oh, he gets close. I start to panic. What does he want? Is it something about my uniform? Are my socks uneven? Do I need to shine my shoes? Or is it my hair? Oh my goodness, Rhea. Breathe. Rhea? Yes? I would advise you not to get too attached to this selfish boy. Hey, I I'm not a boy. I'm a grown man. I, I, um, I... Because should he start listening to my advice, he may not be here much longer. I think his leg is starting to get better despite his constant attempts to sabotage his own recovery. Huh? You don't mean... That's right, within a month you should be. With the phrase you would like to use so much. Up and at him. Just like before. Sorry, Rhea. My apologies. But don't get too attached to Loverboy here. Like everything else in this world, it isn't going to last. Dr. Valerine leaves the room. His footfalls mirrors the rapid beating in my own heart. Why does he make? Why does he always tease me like that? <laughs> oh, Claire. What is it? You guys called about Valley. How did you know about that? Oh, I have my ways. I know everything that happens in this place. I should have known. Claire's been been crafty like a fox. Still, it makes a nice for a nice change. I'm tired of him picking on me the, all the time. I don't know if he picks on you, he just looks out for you. I think. I don't know. I think he's just a control freak. Why does he always get on my case about drinking that stupid knockwood tea? I'm sure if I skipped it for one day, I would not I wouldn't drop dead. I'm far too tough for that. He's just worried about you. But he's better expressing it maybe? You mean he's cold and hard on the outside, but warm and squishy on the inside? I don't know if I go that far, but maybe something like that? Um, without the squishy part. I don't think Dr. Valerian could be called squishy, even if he turned into a slime. He's the most unsquishy person I've ever met. Well, it could be worse. I could be like poor Celine. I feel sorry for her, having that as a father. I know this is going to be harsh, but I'm kind of actually glad he's sick. Claire, how could you say something like that? As a nurse, you're meant to make him better. I know, I know. But if anyone deserves to be severely ill, it's that guy. He's always been a jerk. Maybe near-death experience will teach him a lesson. Claire sighs. In the dark, I see her reaching the top of her head, patting two small bumps that protrude her skull. Those two bumps are hard, are tiny enough to be covered with her nurse's cap when she's working, but they're plainly visible when she takes off at night. 
I think they look kind of cute. Like the horns of a cow. But Claire's always been self-conscious about them. Given the attitudes of our fellow villagers, I can understand why. Celine's dad hates Claire. Because of those horns. He's convinced that she's some kind of demon. And he's never allowed her to enter the church. People whisper things about her in the village. And her mere presence at our hospital gives us a shady reputation. All because of those two bumps on the top of her head. You can't see most of the time. If Dr. Valorin wasn't so good at his job, I doubt people would come up to our hospital. The villagers don't like Dr. Valorin that much either. I like their persecution of Claire, which seems illogical to me. This attitude is one I can understand all too well. Dr. Valorin doesn't try very hard to endear himself to other people. Or at all. I find this kind of attitude impressive, if he wasn't so scary. Well, I can't argue with that. But Zion's very respected, and Celine loves him a lot. He must have some good points. I'm sure even Ishka Bash murderer had some good points. But they're kind of irrelevant since he kidnapped and tortured all those... Not gonna say the word. True. That old man... That old man only respect... That old man only respected because of his wings. That's all. It's not like he's done anything to earn that respect. He was just born that way. Don't you think that's unfair? Life is unfair, I suppose. You're telling me. Claire sighs, giving the small horns under her head another prod. I guess I should count my lucky stars that I work for a guy like Valley. He's kind of an ass, but he's pretty decent deep down. I hate drinking that knockwood tea, though. It makes me want to throw up. Feeding someone something like that every single day is literally the same as torture. I don't think it tastes that bad myself. Because you're probably getting a weaker dose. He's sweet on you, Rhea. Sweet? Yeah, he even, even when he scolds you, it's clear he doesn't mean it. I think he likes you. Oh, Claire. Huh? Why would he like me? I don't know. You should ask Valley. Maybe he thinks you're cute. Um, no, no, wait, that, that's impossible. Poor Valley's attention is wasted on you, Rhea. You're so cuteless. Such a pure girl. It hurts. But I don't want his attention. He only pays attention to me when he's scolding me. It must be because I'm so clumsy. Nah, it isn't. I already said. It's because he likes you. You really are impossible. He doesn't like me. He doesn't like me at all. Boy, will you two keep it down? Some of us have work tomorrow, you know. Be quiet. We're trying to sleep. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. You better be. I wish I were a turtle. Then I could slide my head down into my shell and be free of all these pointed stairs. At least I have my duvet to hide under. Oh, Claire. My spirits shrink deeper with every cut. Just what is Claire thinking? I don't know if I want to find out. April 22nd. Ooh, I like the music change. That's like a really nice music change. <laughs> Dr. Valerine keeps works me hard all morning. I'm kept busy with chores as soon as I wake up. I have to repair breakfast, strip the unoccupied beds, wash the sheets outside with the water drawn from the well, and hang them out to dry. When Dr. Valorin sends me into the village to, on a small quest, fetch quest, I skip the confines of the hospital reli with relief. Uh, excuse me. P please, sir, I'm coming through. I I'm sorry, C can I just come past here? For some reason, the streets are busier than usual today. The din is almost deaf. Deafening. Rhea? Rhea, is that you? Ah! There's a young girl standing in front of me. So sure, I almost missed her. She's tiny, like a woodcut of a fairy. A creation crafted by the famous artist Rayon. She holds a bag filled with shopping in one hand. A telltale leek, a stalk of celery, a bottle of milk peeking over the top, and in the other hand, she holds a stuffed bunny. Ooh, the infinite stuff bunny. 
it's Luca's little sister, Usha. Oh, hello. How have you been? I'm better than ever. Thank you for asking. I is that so? Yeah, you know why? No. Why? Come here, I'll tell you where it's quieter. Lucia shifts her bunny into the crook of her arm and takes hold of my hand, pulling me along with her with a startling amount of strength. Hey, don't diss on those young girls. They got strength. Shamefully, this is a bit of exercise leaves me out of breath. My face is already flushed. What have you been eating? Have you been putting your helping yourself to the pig feet on the farm? Ew, of course not. That's gross. Where's my church? Okay, there it is. Like, trying to- oh, no, that's not it. Hold on, I'm trying to find my charger while also doing the video so I can plug in my laptop before it dies. Because that will not be good at all. But you're so strong. That's because I'm tenacious. Does Ray even know what tenacious is? Tenacious? That's what Mother says. I don't know what it means, though. So neither of them know what- oh, sorry about that. So neither of them know what it means. Where'd my power strip go? Oh, it is stuck under my desk. Never mind. Okay. And laptop is plugged in. That's what mother says. I don't know what it means though. Sorry if I just reread that line. I don't know what it means either. I bet Dr. Valerie would know though. Or Garrett, apparently. Did you know? Did you know? It's gonna happen soon. What's going to happen? It's our soldiers! They're coming back. I... they... H how do you know? When did you get the news? Robin told me when I went for some milk and eggs this morning. He did? That's right. He said a traveler came by. Somebody up from the... From up... Up the north, and he said he's been the line cliff. Did you know, Rhea? We're winning the war. The Esrians are falling back. Our soldiers can come home. For now, maybe, but... Even if we manage to win this fight, will we be so lucky next time? Oh, that music change. Hold on, I got my dog out of my room. That or my pup just wants something else. I'm not exactly sure. My knowledge was about the disputes between Aslan and Arisa. Arisa? I feel like I mispronounced it both times that I've saw the word now. Is patchy. Gleaned from gossip and hearsay. But I know our countries have been at war for several decades now. The fighting sometimes dies down for a few years, but it always starts starts up again. Over what? I'm not exactly sure. Land, probably. That's how my father died. He was killed in a war. I never, I never even got to meet him. He joined the army while my pre while my mother was still pregnant, claiming he was going to fight to protect her. I'm sure he promised my mother, just like Lucas promised me, that he would return, but he never did. What if that happens to Luca? What if our soldiers return and Luca isn't there? He could have been killed months for months ago, for all I know. But when Luca looks at me like that, her eyes wide, smile on her face, how can I say that? That would be far too cruel. My big brother's gonna come home, I am sure of it. Y yes, I, I am looking forward to it too. You sure? You look kinda sad. Are you alright? Don't you want big bro to come back home? No, 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 it's, it's not, it isn't that. I, I just, not that at all. I miss him too, terribly. Then why do you look so sad? I don't get it. Uh, um, I guess I'm just worried. You mean he think- you think he's not gonna come back? Well, well, I- <laughs> If you're so worried about something bad, Celia, then you clearly don't know my big brother. He promised me when he'd come back. He promised. My big brother never ever breaks his promises. Never. Not ever. I know, but- I know that, but circumstances might make this promise hard- Hard to fulfill. Hm. I am not a kid. I know it might be hard. Mom told me too. But I still have faith. 
Big Bro is an amazing person. A really, really amazing person. He can count up to a hundred. He can name all kinds of trees. He was even able to so so hippo. Lucia holds up her stuffed rabbit for my inspection. Inspection. A cute, flopsy creature made of cotton and cloth held together with a thread. The black stitching shows up against his white coat. One of his eyes are a little is a little wonky, but it's still an impressive effort for someone with almost no experience sewing. Lucia's right. Luca is really is an amazing person. But if he puts his mind to it, he can do almost anything. That's why I look up to him so much when we were kids. That's why I admired him. And that's why I liked him, isn't it? He'll come back. He said he'd come back, so he will. It's just not possible that he won't. And if anyone doubts it, they clearly don't know him as well enough. Well, he know him well enough. Oh my goodness, my English. Lucia stomps her foot against the floor. Her bounce, her braids bounce defiantly as she moved. I think she might be right. I want to try to have more faith. Otherwise, what's the point in all that praying? Prayers will never reach God if you don't believe. I, I'll try to have more faith. I will. Good, good. I'm sure that's what Big Brother would want. Ah, hello again, Asa. Miren. Oh, look who it is. It's this little lady. And I'm here too. My goodness, so you are. It's little lady Lucia. You don't look so little anymore, though. Have you gotten bigger? That's right, I'm getting taller, aren't I? You are? It's impressive. I don't even, even recognize you for a moment. You'll end up even bigger than me in no time. But when you do, please try not to step on me. I'll try not to. And how is Hippie, Hippo doing? Is he alright? Hippo is very well. Thank you. Good, good. And would Hippo like something to eat? Maybe a cheese roll? Oh, that sounds so good right now. Ah. Homemade cheese roll. Oh. Ooh, cheese. <laughs> if Hippo wants a cheese roll, that's perfectly fine. But being only a bunny, I doubt he has enough money to pay for it. Uh, well, there is that. Huh? You mean Hippo can't have the roll after all? I never said that. I'm not a cruel woman, and I never wish to deprive you. Sorry, Hippo. A lunchtime snack. So how about this? Since you were the one who made the offer, Asa, why don't I take the cost of the roll from your salary? Doesn't that sound fair? I think you walked into that one. Me too. I guess I've got no choice. Yes, ma'am. Whatever you say. <laughs> Good. Here you go, Lucia. Mirin hands Lucia a cheese roll. Lucia takes it, setting her bag of shopping on the floor so she can hold the roll. Enjoy. And Hippo too. Yay! Thank you, Miss Mirin. And thank you, Asa. <laughs> it's alright. No big deal. My wallet can take at least this much. But were you trying to save up for one of those funny woodcuts of a half-naked woman? Yep. That's... Will always be the dream. Oh my, are your dreams so bland and predictable? W what do you mean? Nothing. Really that those woodcuts in the market are completely unremarkable in almost every way. You would say that you're a woman. You don't have the... Pre you don't have the appreciation for the female form as I do. <laughs> sure you do. Totally you do. As if a female can't appreciate another person better than a, a male. Because, you know, that's just how... I, I, I don't know, Asa. I don't know. I don't want to get heated in the comments for that, but still. Is that really what you think? Well, um, in actuality, the one without any appreciation is you. I've seen some... Graver... Gravure? 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 Mm. Prince, that would really make your heart go wild. 
Those woodkins are merely cher child's play in comparison. Ch child's play? That's right. In the craftsmanship of them is shockly, shockingly poor. The anatomy is all wrong. Mm. No woman's side spine should be able to curve like that and snap, and not snap in two. <laughs> Such crude imitations of a female figure are nothing more than insults, especially when silly boys like yourself assuming that's truly what naked women look like. Uh, uh, I didn't think the word woodcuts were that bad. Of course you didn't. You've never seen a naked woman before, have you? No, I haven't. And that's why you're just an amateur. Come back in 100 years when you've had the proper amount of time to study the beauties of real women. And maybe I'll let you take a peek at some of my pieces of, in my collection. Uh, suddenly, it feels like a whole new world has opened up before me. Is this true enlightenment? No, you're just a pervert. <laughs> okay, Rhea. I suppose that's also a possibility. Honestly, what's Lucia gonna think? As it turns, the answer is not a lot. She's too busy eating her, sorry, hippos cheese roll. Ah, this is delicious. I love cheese rolls. <sighs> I'm glad. <laughs> Asa really is the best. You're amazing. I know. You know, hippo says he loves you. He loves you loads and loads, you know? <laughs> but thanks, tell the hippo I love him too. Yay, I will. My, my. Despite his rudimentary knowledge of the female figure. He's a tr has his ways with the ladies, doesn't he? What can I say? I'm just talented. Uh, I suppose so. <laughs> it's a shame the only girl in the in the whole village who likes him is a nine-year-old. Ugh. Asa, Asa. Lucia starts to tug on Asa's arm. Uh, yes? What is it? What's that? What do you mean, that? The thing on the counter. The funny thing. It wasn't here last time I came in. I turn my head, it doesn't take me long to spot the spot the cause of her confusion. It's a large box of device that almost looks sinister. I think I saw it in here yesterday, but I never asked what it was. Oh, that. Asa frowns. I'm not entirely sure myself. Manon was just explaining it to me, but I don't really get it. I've never seen one of those before either. It's not some kind of weapon, is it? This, don't be silly. Manon's pr smile smiles proudly, giving the strange device a light pat with one hand. It's an instant It's an instant coffee maker, of course. Of course. What's so of course of that I've never heard of such a thing before. It's always I've always found this part funny based on how um you know like um medieval times. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Back in the beginning of times, this was not a thing for them. They had no idea this technology even existed. <laughs> Ew, I don't like coffee. Sorry, I totally just spaced out there. I can't stand the stuff either. Me either. <laughs> I'm not a massive fan either. The world is already so full, so full to the brim of bitter things. Coffee only makes it worse. Is there no milk and sugar in it yet? Then why did you buy something like that makes coffee? Because it's so convenient. Coffee usually takes so long to make with roasting those beans over a fire, then grinding them and boiling, boiling them. Brewing a single cup can take hours, which is ridiculous. Coffee is meant to replenish your energy, not take it away. This incredible little device, however, does it all for you. All you need is to push a button, and you can enjoy a nice, warm cup of coffee in mere moments. But how does it work? I'm not entirely sure. I think some en enchantment mixed with some high-quality machinery. Magic? That's right. Wow, you've never seen enchantment objects around here. I know, it's like this town is actively trying to resist magic. Even though it makes life so much easier. People don't really like what they're not used to, I guess. I know, but it's such a pain. It feels like I'm surrounded by sheep, not people. <laughs> Is that really how Mirren views others? Is she truly that disdainful towards the human race? <laughs> Maybe because Mirren isn't human herself. At least I don't think she is. Not with those ears. 
Hmm, I don't remember where to find this delightful thing. But I might have... But I think it might have been Agua. Agua, I've never heard of it. That's not surprising. It's the most desert... It's mostly desert there. Nothing that interesting. They do sell beautiful fat... The most beautiful fabrics, though. And sweets. And a little fun things like this, too, if you know where to look. Asa clicks his tongue against his roof. You're always like this. You just like collecting stuff, even if you're never going to use it. There's nothing wrong with having a hobby. It just keeps me young. The harassing me kept you hung. Kept you young. That too, of course. Anyways, I've been wondering. Wondering what? Why'd you come in again, Rue? I thought you had to do all your shopping yesterday. Uh, well, I, I did, but... Is it because you missed me? You couldn't stand the thought of not seeing my attractive face for more than 24 hours? Get a life, Aza. Hardly. <laughs> it's because I ran into Lucia. She said she wanted to tell you something. You do? Mm -hmm. Lucia stuffs the rest of her bread, rest the bread in her mouth and swallows. Then wiping her cheek with the back of her arm, she looks at Asa and smiles. I thought you might want to know. Our soldiers are coming back soon. But Asa doesn't look surprised, as I thought he would. He certainly doesn't look as surprised as I was. So you heard, too. Yes, and you? Robin told us earlier, the whole village knows about it at this point. You know how much that old man likes to talk. Everybody except me. Why was I one of the last to find out? I saw a whole bunch of people hanging up bunting in the square. I haven't seen everyone look so happy in years. It's kind of exciting. Sure, it's exciting if you like bunting. Personally, I think it looks tacky. <sighs> Says the woman who wears half her jewel wears half a jewelry stall in her hair. My hair does, doesn't look tacky. Each and every individual piece of jewelry was, care, was chosen with careful consideration from all four corners of the globe. They think the world is flat. Good to know. Sure, sure. And don't these celebrations seem a tad premature? Everyone's asking as, those are those so, as though our soldiers will arrive at the village gates tomorrow evening. It takes a few, get, few good weeks to get here from Lightcliffe. Line cliff by foot. Uh, don't be such a spoiled sport. They're just excited. I am too. I can't believe it. I'm finally going to see Big Bro again. That's right. It'll just be like old times. Asa accepts Lucia's joy without question. Unlike me, he doesn't seem to consider the possibility that Lucia, that Luca might not come home. Am I being too pessimistic? Maybe I should try harder to be happy, but I can't stop myself from having doubts. Everyone's, if everyone's busy celebrating, who's going to mourn for the men who died? Whew, that got deep. Deep and dark. But besides the news, life continues on in our small, sleepy village, just like it always did. The days, then weeks, roll by, but we hear no further news, and our soldiers still haven't arrived. April turns into May, the sun gets warmer, beating down from a vast, blue sky. The trees around the village grow even thicker even taller. Their bright green leaves, pulsing with life, shielding us from the outside world. The world the world of war and death, spilled blood, tilled mud. While people stop talking, the excitement, excited gossip comes to a halt. Faces, smiles fall from faces, anxiety creeps in. The bunting remains, strung above, strung above, strung, strung up around the houses. Flapping sadly, flapping sadly in the summer breeze. But that's all. Nothing remains of our supposed victory. Luca, come back. Rhea. Luca. Rhea. Luca. Rhea, wake up. Get out of bed. Uh? My eyes snap open, my vision blurry, and it takes me a few, few moments to understand what's going on. You know what? Before we find out what's going on, I think this is a good place to stop for today. I hope y'all enjoyed uh, this world unknown a little bit more. And if you have any questions or anything like that, go ahead and let me know and I'll reply as soon as I see it. I hope y'all have a fantastic day. Bye!